Hey guys, and welcome to my channel. I'm Elizabeth with LA's Handcrafted Jewelry, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create this lovely woven teardrop pendant. Now, this is a component based pendant, which means we'll be weaving various pieces that will then be secured to a frame. But before we get started, please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe and ring the notification bell so that you never miss a video. Now, let's jump in. Now for materials you're going to need an 8 inch segment of 16 gauge square wire. I don't recommend using round for the frame as it's harder to get the wire to stay secured to it. Um, two 5 inch segments of 21 gauge half round wire, uh, approximately another uh, 12 inch segment of 21 gauge half round wire that we'll use for the bale, two 2 inch segments of 18 gauge half round wire, a teardrop cabochon, I'm using an 18 by 25 millimeter cabochon for this tutorial, approximately 2 to 3 feet of 20 gauge uh, weaving wire, three 7 inch segments of 20 gauge round wire, two 7 inch segments of 20 gauge square wire, and another 7 inch segment of 20 or 18 gauge round wire. Um, I ended up using 20 gauge wire, but um, either or, whichever you prefer, we'll get when I get to that point. <laughs> Uh, for tools, you're going to need a ruler, a ring mandrel, or something round like a large dowel or handle, um, flush cutters, chain nose pliers, and round nose pliers, and although not necessary, I recommend having a pair of flat nose pliers as well. Now to get started, I'm going to go ahead and take my 16 gauge square wire and I'm going to grab my ring mandrel. And about the size 10 mark on my ring mandrel, I'm going to go ahead and begin forming the teardrop with my base wire. Now once I've created my little teardrop, I'm going to grab my little stone and stick it in there. And there should be a little bit of a gap between the stone and the wire. Um, you might need to adjust it a little bit. Just take your time. This is an important step. Uh, like I said, just making sure that there's plenty of room in between the stone and the frame. Once I've created my little teardrop, I'm going to grab my flat nose pliers and I'm going to bend just the very tip of the wire straight up so I can begin creating my bale. And again here I'm just making sure that there's plenty of space in between uh, the stone and the frame. Now at this point I'm grabbing my 12 inch segment of half round wire, it's 21 gauge, and I'm going to begin wrapping it around the frame a little bit to give myself a little bit of leverage. And then I'm going to begin wrapping it around both of the wires that are going parallel straight up. Now at this point I'm grabbing my ruler to see how far we are and we're about an inch up which is plenty for the bale. So at this point I'm going to go ahead and start securing the ends, cutting them off with flush cutters and then I'll be flattening it flat against the wire with my flat nose pliers. Now you can use your round nose pliers to create the bale, but I happen to have some bale making pliers, so I'm going to go ahead and use those. You can also use a small dowel if that's easier for you. And I'm just going to bend it backward to begin to create the bale for the pendant. Now 
After bending it back and creating the bail, I'm going to go ahead and begin separating these wires and then using my thumb to kind of give them a little bit of a curve so that they kind of follow the, along the outside of the frame. And then we will secure them to the frame. Now after getting them kind of aligned with the frame, I'm going to grab my flesh cutters and give them a little trim. I want to make sure that there's enough surface area that there will be enough wire laying against the frame. So it'll be about halfway down the pendant. Now I'm going to grab my two 5 inch segments of 21 gauge wire and starting with one of the wires making sure that the flat side is against the square wire. I'm going to begin wrapping it around once around the frame and then I'm going to wrap it around both the frame and that excess wire there in the back and begin securing it to the frame. Now I'm just wrapping these pieces a little bit more around the frame by itself to begin securing the wire and then I'll flatten it all against the wire with my chain nose pliers. Now once it's secured, you shouldn't feel anything on the back, it should be fairly clear. And we'll do the same thing on the opposite side. Now once that's all done, I'm just checking again with the stone to make sure that there's plenty of room. It's about a millimeter of space, which should be plenty for me. And then at this point, we're going to go ahead and grab our 18 gauge half round wire and we're going to begin creating a surface for the uh, stone to lay against in the back. So making sure that the half round has the flat side facing up, we're going to go ahead and begin securing it to the frame with our chain nose pliers. Now I'm just going to go ahead and cut off the excess with my chain nose pliers and tuck in that wire.
After we've done the first one, we're going to take the other segment of 18 gauge wire and do the same thing a little further towards the bottom. And once all the wires have been tucked in, I'm going to grab my stone, place it in there, and make sure that it sits nice and neat. Now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and take three segments of 20 gauge round wire. They're seven inches each. And I'm going to be using my spring clamp because that helps me weave. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and place it in there. You can also tape the pieces together with masking tape or use a ring clamp. And then I'm going to grab um, well, first I'm going to straighten them out a little bit, and then I'll grab my weaving wire and begin to weave. Now just bringing the weaving wire down in between the bottom wire and the middle wire. And I'm going to go ahead and start the weave by wrapping the, the uh, weaving wire around the bottom base wire two times at the minimum. And then I'm going to wrap it around the bottom and the middle base wire two times. Then I'm going to bring it in between the bottom two base wires and then wrap it around the top two base wires two times. Now I'm going to bring it down under from behind and around the bottom two base wires again. And this is just going to be the basic pattern that we're going to repeat for a little while. And we're basically going to continue this pattern until we reach about an inch and a half of weave. Once we've completed that much weave, we're going to go ahead and take our tail wire and we're going to do a little pull and twist. You can also trim it with your flesh cutters if you prefer. And then we're going to go ahead and begin securing this to the frame and then we'll continue weaving. Now we're going to take these wires and put them in through the bale like so. And then we're going to begin uh, wrapping the wire over the top and giving a little bit of a curve. But before I do too much of that, I want to make sure that I wrap these uh, bare wires around the top of the bale so that way it's secured to the frame. At this point, I'm going to grab my chain nose pliers to kind of give me some aid and kind of crimp that wire against the bail. Now 
going to go ahead and just kind of grab these wires one by one. I find this a little bit easier than trying to wrap them all around at the same time and begin wrapping them one more time around the top of the bale. Grabbing my flush cutter is going to go ahead and trim off the excess, just to, making sure that there's just enough so I can tuck it underneath the bale portion. Now once it's secured to the bale, I can go ahead and begin adding more curve to this piece and just gently curving it over around this way. So that way it can be coming down and around to secure the cabochon. Now at this point I'm going to go ahead and continue weaving a little ways until I reach about the bottom 18 gauge wire there at the bottom of the frame. And I'm going to go ahead and show you a little trick that I learned from Oksana actually. So you take a couple fingers about uh, of wire and we're going to basically create a loop that's going to be an excess that we're going to use to secure this later. And I'm then going to bring the wire in between the two bottom base wires. You can see I stopped the weave with the bottom base wires being wrapped. So I'm going to begin wrapping around the top two base wires like so. But I'm just going to hold the loop like so against the back and then continue weaving as if it wasn't there. Now after weaving a little while, I'm going to go ahead and begin adding a little bit more curve to the base wires so that way I can kind of follow the inside of the frame. And I'm basically going to go ahead and continue weaving until I reach the other side of the 18 gauge wire. Now I've woven over to the other side and sometimes it helps to use your stone to help with the curvature portion. Um, so I have it's been sitting in there helping me curve the wire. But at this point I'm going to go ahead and take it out and then I'm going to create another little loop that I can use to secure the weave to the frame later. So doing like we did before you can see that I ended the weave there with the bottom two base wires and I'm going to use about two fingers worth of weave wire that I'm going to then hold against the back and then bring that weave wire in between the bottom two base wires and then begin wrapping it around the top two base wires two times to secure that little loop and then continue weaving until we reach about the a little bit over the top about like so and I'm just putting my stone in there a little bit to make sure that the weave is going to secure it in place and that it won't fall out and then I'll begin completing this weave portion and that's just simply by finishing off the weave by wrapping it a couple times, two or three times at the end around the bottom base wire and then pulling and twisting to cut off the excess. At this point I'm going to go ahead and begin curving the wire on top just below the first curve and then I'm going to bring it a little bit over towards the back. So bending it then towards the back and then this is going to be the portion that's going to be used to be secured to the frame. So this is kind of the shape it's going to be, but before we can go any further with that, we're going to grab our flushing flush cutters and trim that off. And then we'll use these wires here at the end to secure it to the top of the frame. And if you have a pair of needle nose pliers like I do, these tweezer nose pliers, they are extremely helpful. Um, this can be a really tight, fiddly process, um, so just give yourself a lot of time to work with it. Once the furthest wire in is secured, we'll go ahead and then begin securing the middle base wire. And this one doesn't have to be wrapped as securely since this is the metal base wire. Um, so we're just going to wrap it in or bring it in and wrap it around one time. Okay. 
And now we're going to just secure this last base wire around the frame right next to the metal base wire. Now at this point I'm going to go ahead and grab my flat nose pliers and begin adjusting the weave a little bit until it's right where I want it to be. Now at this point I'm going to go ahead and put my stone in there and adjust the weave just to make sure that the stone sits nice and securely. Once we've made sure that the weave is secure, I'm going to go ahead and take these little loops that we left behind there in the weave, and we're going, I'm going to go ahead and cut it into two segments using my flush cutters, and doing the same on the opposite side, and I'm going to use them to secure the weave to the frame. Now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and take both of those wires and feed them in between the stone and the frame being careful not to wiggle it too much as it might make the wire break. And of course, doing the same on the opposite side. Once I got my weaving wire right where I want it, I'm going to go ahead and begin wrapping one of those wires around the outer frame. And I'm going to do that a minimum of four to five times. Secured that wire, I'm going to grab my flush cutters, trim off the excess, and then tuck in that burr wire with my chain nose pliers. I'm going to take this next weaving wire, bring up that 18 gauge a little bit, and then I'm going to begin wrapping it around the 18 gauge wire about four or five times as well. At this point, I'm going to just do a little pull and twist method, and it's a clean cut. And then I'm going to do the same on the opposite side. Once I finish the opposite side, this is kind of how the pendant should look. And now we can move on to the next component. Now I got both of my 20 gauge square wires in my spring clamp, about seven inches worth. I'm gonna go ahead and begin wrapping my weaving wire around the bottom base wire two times to start the weave. And then I'm going to wrap it around both wires, basically all the way up. So we'll just continue wrapping it around until we reach about an inch to an inch and a half. Now as I am weaving, I am using my flat nose pliers to kind of squish that wire there against the square wire, so it's going to be nice and flat against that wire. After wrapping it around for about an inch, I'm going to go ahead and do a little pull and twist on the tail of the weaving wire, and then I'm going to go ahead and begin securing it to the frame. So I just need to grab my frame, and I'm going to go ahead and create basically a little hook that I'm going to use to feed it through the, the basically the top portion of the frame. 
But before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and cut off a little bit of that excess wire just so I don't have so much to wrap around the frame and then use my chain nose or tweezer nose pliers to create little hooks at the end of the wire. Now I'm feeding them through and then from here I can go ahead and grab my tweezer nose pliers and begin pulling them all the way through and then eventually start wrapping them around the frame. Once the weave is nice and snug, I'm, go I'm going to go ahead and begin curving it forward just slightly. And then I'm going to basically follow along the side of the previous weave. Now once it's kind of curved where I like it, I'm going to go ahead and continue weaving around. And once I make it to about the middle of the, the pendant, I'm gonna go ahead and create another loop. But before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and compress all of these weaves. And then using about two fingers worth, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my weaving wire and create a little loop at the end there. And then doing similar to what I did with the previous weave, I'm gonna go ahead and pull it against the back of the weave here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and continue wrapping the wire around the two segments of 20 gauge square wire. If this is going to be the more difficult loop to make, just be really patient with yourself as you're wrapping the wire. Now I'm just compressing those wires with my flat nose pliers and I'll go ahead and continue wrapping around those two base wires until we reach about the top of the frame. Now once we've uh, woven all the way to the top, we're going to go ahead and finish off the weave. Um, we're going to pull these wires apart on the top a little bit. And then we're gonna wrap the weaving wire around the bottom base wire three times. Now it's not gonna make it all the way down to the weave and that's okay. Uh, we just wanna make sure that this wire is secured. And now at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and take my flush cutters and trim off this wire so I can attach it to the frame. I'm leaving about uh, probably half an inch or so to work with. And then I'm going to go ahead and begin bending this over following the previous weave. And then I'm going to bend it backward and we're going to attach it to the frame the same as we did with the previous weave. About this point, I felt maybe that these were a little bit too long. So I'm going to go ahead and shorten that to about a quarter of an inch and then begin securing these to the frame. Now this can definitely be a finicky process and if it's easier to get behind the, um, the previous weave, you can actually lift it up a little bit so that way you can have some room to work with. 
um, but now that I've gotten these attached I'm just going to go ahead and begin shaping it with my flat nose pliers carefully we don't want to ruin the wrap that we just did and kind of conforming it to that same weave that I did previously Now I'm just going to go ahead and take this loop and carefully pull it downward and then cut the uh, loop into two pieces with my flesh cutters and then I'm going to direct it down in between the stone and the frame like I did with the previous wraps and then wrap them around the bottom of the frame. And I'm gonna go ahead and wrap these, uh, this weaving wire around the bottom of the frame about five times on either side. Once we've wrapped the wire, we're going to go ahead and pull and twist, or you can cut them with your flesh cutters and cut off the excess weaving wire. Now I'm going to go ahead and take my last segment of 20 gauge round wire, it should be about 7 inches long, and then I'm going to wrap it around the back portion of the frame. You can see it's the back of the bale, and I'm going to wrap that around a couple times to start uh, the wrap. Now at this point I'm going to go ahead and basically begin tracing the inner weave um, with my 20 gauge wire using my thumb and my index finger primarily to create curves and kind of fall in between both of the weaves that we've just created. Now this can be really difficult, but just take your time and enjoy the process. Now once I've gotten the wire where I want it, I'm going to go ahead and trim off the excess wire. And then I'm going to use that back portion to secure it to the frame. Um, just being sure that it falls in the lines before I do that. And then I'm going to basically bring it in between the, the front portion of the frame and the bale portion in the back. And I'm going to bring it in between those and wrap it around just like I did when I started it. Now as you can see I'm using my thumb, uh, my left thumb, to kind of hold it in place while I wrap this around the back. Uh, this will keep it from pulling it too much out of whack and um, distorting my weave or my wrap. Thank you. 
Now once I've secured the wire in place, I'm just going to gently use my chain nose pliers to form the wire a little bit to where I like it. Just take your time and be careful, you don't want to scratch up the wire too much, um, but this just kind of helps it sit in place better. Now at this point here, I'm going to go ahead and grab some weaving wire and I'm going to basically wrap it around the 20 gauge wire that I just installed. And I have probably about at least five inches of weaving wire that I'm going to use. I'm going to direct it there underneath and I'm going to wrap it around this wire about six to seven times to start. And then I'll use this wire to secure it to the frame. Now I'm directing the weaving wire down in between the frame and the stone. As you can see, I went in between the weaves, so that way it can sit flush against the weave there. And I'm going to do the same with the other side of my little weaving wire here as well, and use those to secure it to the back side of the frame. Now once the weaving wire is through, I'm going to wrap it around the frame on either side a minimum of five to six times, just to make sure that it's really secure to the frame. Now I'm doing the other side. Now once I've done that, I'm just going to do a little pull and twist and pull off the excess wire. Once everything's installed, you can go ahead and continue to make adjustments as needed. And here's the finished piece. I hope that you all enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions or just want to share your work, you're welcome to join the Facebook group. We have a lot of fun sharing and encouraging one another there. Also, you can check out my website for uh, written tutorials so that you can do projects at your own pace. All the links are listed in the description below. But before you go, hit that like button if you like the tutorial, and don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy these videos. And until we meet again, have a great day!